Hey everybody, BDO44 coming at you with another video. Alright, so I'm going to give you my breakdown or my reaction to more so the Boston Celtics Los Angeles Lakers matchup tonight in Boston. Uh, the Boston Celtics did get the victory, beat the Lakers by about 20 something, 20 points or so, something like that. The Lakers got outscored in the paint pretty severely. Did keep our turnovers down. That was a good thing. We only had 11 turnovers on the night, so that was about as good as it gets. But unfortunately, same things I'll be complaining about every night. It's the same thing we're going to have to talk about here again for this game. Small ball lineups, lack of size equals us getting outboarded and ultimately us losing. It's the same thing we talk about every night, you guys. Anybody that follows my channel, I'm sorry. I don't have new content for you. Lakers keep on doing the same old rinse and repeat. So you can watch my other video. And it's going to be the same thing that I have. In my mind right now, we just have to stop the bleeding as a franchise. And I know that being patient is usually the smart way to go. But in this league, with these circumstances, with our timeline, we don't have time to figure out if these guys are going to get it together. Now, I understand being concerned with trying to make a move. Because if you make a move and you make the wrong move, it can have an even worse result. But what we're seeing is us continuing to repeat the same things and it's just not working um Dennis Schroeder had a, a spirited game against us you know had 22 6 and 6 if I'm not mistaken uh D Jason Tatum was a big time superstar tonight with 31 and 11 if I'm not mistaken don't quote me on this I just looked at the stats so I'm going off my head um Carmelo chipped in with 13 for the Lakers Russi didn't have the greatest game uh Braun did play very well was very efficient uh Played some good defensive sequences as well. Saw some really good stuff out of Anthony Davis scoring the ball, even though there was some, some bad AD out there too. Uh, we'll talk about it. But all in all, you just saw us get outplayed by guys like Marcus Smart and Dennis Schroeder and Jason Tatum. Josh Richardson was very active. Uh, you know, uh, Al Horford was fantastic this evening. So you just saw too much Celtics. I, I just think the Lakers, you know, to be honest with you guys, it, it's, it's more of what we've been talking about in terms of our offense being terrible and our defense being terrible. But we also saw just a lack of help for, for the guys who were playing well tonight. It was only a couple guys we had in rotation, and some of them weren't really able to give us anything at all. You know, we had Rondo out there for a little bit, didn't get nothing out of him. Um, you know, we put Bays more out there a little bit, didn't get much out of him. So Carmelo Anthony was pretty much the only bench player on our team that was really able to have it have it going to any capacity tonight. Um, THT wasn't himself tonight. He he was back to being uh, kind of you know up and down. So this was a this was a bad game for him after three straight good ones, and we could live with that. But um, you know I just I really feel this way. I really feel this way as it pertains to this offense. It's stand around offense. If you watch the Lakers, it's just a lot of guys standing around in position to catch the ball and shoot. While other guys, you might see one guy come for a screen. You know, you might see one back screen, you know, back cut rather or something like that. A guy will come set a pick here and there. But the majority of our offense is someone gets the ball at the top of the key. Everybody else stands around and maybe we work the ball around a little bit. Like I said, maybe one screen comes. We do some dribble penetration. Other than that, it's just guys waiting to catch the ball. Um, and standing around for a good 20, 12 to 13 seconds into the shot clock. It's just standing while one while the guy who's holding the ball has to figure out in the triple threat what he wants to do. It's just not offense at all. It's just not how basketball is supposed to be played at all. If you if you grew up watching the teams that I grew up watching, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Spurs, uh, those Heat teams, uh, you know that ball movement and people movement is very, very important. Those Detroit Piston teams, I, I, I hearken back to Rip Hamilton. I think about guys like Reggie Miller. I know how offense is supposed to be run. Movement, constant ball movement, constant body movement. If you don't have both, you're easy to read. And in a game where guys are long, strong, fast, and all this, they jump in the passing lanes at light speed, teleporting and stuff, basically, you can't have stagnant offense. You can't just be sitting there as a, as a sitting duck where the defense can just basically anticipate what you're doing. That's exactly what we have out there. And I want to fire Frank Vogel because of that. I understand that I give him a pass for our defense because he's a good defensive coach. When he has his pieces out there, he can coach defense. But he, like Luke Walton, on this roster with this Laker team, is hell-bent on playing small ball lineups. Now, I'm starting to wonder if that's an organizational slash LeBron James philosophy thing because it is two coaches that have done this. 
and it doesn't help us. Uh, and and it's just like you know, these rotations, man. Uh, we are limited. We have injury issues and all of that. But I'm telling you, when you go out there and you got a guy like Al Horford, and and you don't have a center on the floor, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get out outboarded. They got guys like Grant Williams who rebound the ball very well. Jason Tatum's out there jumping around, doing his 50-50 ball thing, playing a spirited matchup against his favorite team, the Lakers. I mean, you have to understand what the temperature of the room is when you go into a different building. Dennis Schroeder wants to kill you. Jason Tatum dreams about the Lakers. Marcus Smart is is, is spirited against this franchise. You got to know the guys are going to bring their best against you. And if you're not going to come out with a game plan that's going to mix it up, a good defensive team like Boston... It's going to take you out of your stuff. And that's what they did. They played great defense against us. You got to give them credit. Their interior, both defense and offense, was fantastic. And because our coach continued to not have centers on the floor, trying to run AD as a center, we got outboarded and and we allowed them to score in the paint uh, for for over 56 points. So, um, you know, when you have Dwight Howard and and, 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 and DeAndre Jordan on the team, you have to you have to use them. Obviously, you have to use them. We don't have the privilege or or, or the luxury rather of um, a very diverse roster as it pertains to our center position. We don't have very talented bigs, so we just got to throw what we have out there. And if you refuse to, then you're gonna have this happen. LeBron James is not a big. He's not. LeBron James, and I'm gonna tell you guys this because I truly believe this, and I've always believed this. LeBron James is a natural small forward who has been excellent at the power forward position his whole career because he's excellent at any position his whole, at all times. But naturally, you don't want him guarding fives. You don't want him guarding fours. He shouldn't have to, to body up against these guys. And yet here we found ourselves in situations where he's being boxed out by guys who are just a little bigger than him, who are more, you know, big-minded than him. Anthony Davis, same thing same thing in fact much more so actually because he's the one that really gets confused about his position and everybody seems to be gung-ho about him playing the center position because yes he can outplay all centers in the league there's not a center in the league that he can't make silly when he's on that's not what i'm coming from it's not about him being able to cook guys it's about him getting bodied repeatedly on the box out it's about him repeatedly finding himself out of position, Brooke Lopez style, on the boards. It's all the time. And that is what we saw tonight. Frank Vogel continued to leave him out there at the center position and match him up there with Braun and maybe match him up there with Carmelo Anthony thinking these guys are going to play like centers. And what I know and have always known is that those players are not bigs. They've gotten away as bigs in the small ball era that they grew up in. But the reality is, if they played in the 80s and you tried running them as bigs, they're going to get destroyed by the Akeem Olajuwon's and the Patrick Ewins and those guys. You try running like this in the 80s, we getting beat even worse than we did tonight. Much worse. Stop running forwards as centers. That's what I have to say to you guys. Respect the big man. Respect the big man in this league. I'm, I, I I have to say this because we're in an era where everybody wants to be Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Everybody wants to shoot the ball. Everybody wants you know. But listen, size still dominates because at the end of the day, taller people can reach the ball point higher than shorter people. As common sense as that sounds, when the ball tips up, when it's coming off the rim, when it's whenever whatever. At the end of the day, the ball is up. And the person who can get to it the quickest is the one that's going to have the most opportunities at winning the basketball game. It's just what it is, man. You've got to have big players out there. When the Lakers were dominant, they always had size. Any era since the beginning of time. We go all the way back to George Mikan. We always, always, always had size. And in this era, we have it. But it's underutilized, and, 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 and it's being asked to do, do things that it's not supposed to be doing in Anthony Davis's case. And, you know, so so that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm 
over this era as a whole as it pertains to the small ball nonsense. But I'm even more so over our propensity to half ass it, so to speak. We want to play small ball, but then we want to bring in all these bigs who can't shoot. And then you don't want to play them. Now you have a useless bench. You got a bunch of old guys who are well past their prime who are hoping to not do any heavy lifting in the, in the regular season. Now they're being asked to play legitimate roles against real players who are in their primes. And they're getting their, their hats brought to them. They're getting their, their boots smoked. You know? Time after time, we saw layup after layup. Dennis Schroeder, uh, you know, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, constantly getting to the rim, constantly getting their hands on the rim. And then we see our guys, we shooting jumpers. Some of the most just non, non ill-advised shots, I'd say. Some of the shots that we, we made, you love them. You know, AD made some tough shots. Braun made some tough shots. Brody took some bad shots because of those tough shots. It was a lot of that kind of stupid stuff going on, too. I got to be honest. Brody, we don't need you trying to do what AD and Braun does just because they did it, fam. I see Braun hit a jumper from the left side. I see AD hit a wet jumper from the top of the key. And then I see you try to take a jumper from the left side. You know that ain't your game. Okay, it's starting to get to a point where I'm starting to get frustrated. And my tone is changing because it's like when you see someone makes the same mistakes and you see them make bonehead plays, it's just... It's very easy to blame them because of that, but, you know, you just want to see players play better. You just want to see guys be under control. I did see more um, good. I saw some good sequences of good timing from Russell Westbrook, a couple good plays, rhythm passes, one early on to um, Avery Bradley that I appreciated. So you're starting to see glimpses of him being able to do the right thing in this in this situation, but you see a lot of him still struggling. Um, and that's just what it is. I just I just want so bad for his basketball IQ to just be up to par with the rest of the team. Just cut and dry, fam. He has so many different attributes that work for us, including keeping the defense on their on their heels, driving at them. But he just he just really doesn't tend to give us the best of IQ plays out there from moment to moment and in his stagnant offense. When everything's easy to read, when you're in a space where, um, you know, the defense is pretty much anticipating what you're doing because of the lack of movement, you got to be able to improvise well in those situations. And he doesn't. He just doesn't. You know, he does not improvise well when there's just free space to kind of improvise and figure out what you got to do outside of your system. And then when he's running the system, unfortunately, that doesn't work for us either because the system itself is trash. So, I, I blame LeBron James, too. i got to give him his share of the blame. I can't just look at Frank Vogel and say, yo, Frank, it's all on you. No, LeBron James is the basketball mind on this franchise right now. He's the one that needs to tell Frank, hey, look, this offense is trash. Let me tell you what we got. And come up with some X's and O's. Him and Rondo are the two. Y'all, y'all super geniuses, bro. Ain't no excuse for this horrible offense. If Frank needs an offensive coordinator, it's on y'all to be that. And and I'm I'm not I'm not getting that from my my stars star genius basketball players. They're just leaving their coach out there to, to suffer the ills of, of of being blamed for for his terrible offense. And it's just it's not just him. Literally, it's not. It's on them, the superstars, the the offensive geniuses to help him out. And I'm and I'm gonna hold them on that. They need to do that. Give him some plays, man. Um. And if you guys are satisfied with your offense, then then y'all y'all in the wrong too, because this is bullcrap. It ain't working. Period. Switch it up. I like what I see out of Malik Monk, although defensively we didn't, you know, he's not effective, unfortunately. Uh, that's not me complaining. It's just it's just understanding it. It's not it's not even something I'm, I'm I'm disturbed by in any way. It's just what you expect from 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 who he is as a player. He's an offensive guy, a shooter, and he's done an excellent job at that finishing and all that i'm happy with malik monk we just have to give him some surrounding players that can defend when he's on the floor you know what i mean you don't kill a guy for not being who he's not you just make sure he has what he needs malik monk needs to be on the floor with defenders rim protectors people who can help make up for for guys blowing past him and stuff like that we need that but also more contested shots um, from, our, from our guards in general. I want to see guys putting their hands up more, more contesting, 
more effort. Um, so, yeah, pick a struggle, Lakers. That's my attitude right now. Pick a struggle, bro. If you're going to suck on the defensive end, don't suck on the offensive end. You've got too much talent to, to just have these type of stagnant issues and stuff like that. It's just, it's, And then the, the, the lineups and the roles that people are, have on this team, I look at the, at the back of the bench and I say, okay, that guy should have had some minutes tonight. That guy should have had some minutes, didn't play. It's just a lot of that. Frank, it's a lot of that, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still seeing the same thing I was saying in the last two games. Until we fire this coach, we're going to continue to look this way. Maybe one day we'll we'll put ourselves in a position to beat a good team on the road while this is happening. But I think it's going to be one of those situations, if we win a game like that, you better celebrate because you ain't going to win too many. Um, you're just not. And in a year where the Eastern Conference is basically stronger than the Western Conference for the first time in over 40 years, um, this is about to be a very bad road trip for us, period. Why? Because our offense It's not even the defense. It's, it's literally not the defense, y'all, because the defense is going to be bad regardless. It's the offense. We must just do a lot of things differently, a lot of things, a lot. Um, and, I, and I think the first order of business, if we're not going to fire this coach, is to is to implement an understanding that there is not going to be any success for us unless we keep a big on the floor, an actual big, DJ or Dwight, to be absolutely exact. You're not going to get away with Braun being a big. AD is, is only a big because of his length. He's actually a guard in his head, and we got to respect the fact that he did not grow up a big. That's what I'm. That's what I'm here to tell you. Anthony Davis is a big because he had a growth spurt. He should actually probably be a shooting guard, about five six shooting guard, but he's not. He's a seven footer with with longer arms than most people. So, you know, yes, he gets boards because of that, but he's not your Dennis Rodman, Carl Malone box out. You know, he he doesn't have that that Ben Wallace in. It's not there. He needs people like that to teach him how to be a a real boxing out Clint Capella type of center, y'all. He just needs someone to teach him how to do those things. And I think with his genius and his size and his and his length, once he learns how to be better on the ground before the jump on the rebound and boxing out, stuff like that, positioning himself to be stronger in that way, then you'll see him get 22 to 23 boards he go, his boards go up. You understand what I'm saying? He's not, he's not doing it right. And that's what I see out there. So as long as we continue to ignore that and keep him out there as the center, you're going to have issues. And Frank Vogel ain't going to make it through the season. He's not. You're going to have to fire him. And I know they don't want to do it because the coaching search is not going to be an easy process, especially in the middle of the season. But you got a good coach is your backup there. So I wouldn't feel as bad about that, you know. Fizz has had his struggles here and there, but I, I, I trust that he'll be able to at least keep us afloat um, until we find our guy, if that's what y'all going to do. But Frank Vogel is not our guy. He's not our guy. I like his his demeanor. Someone mentioned on uh, in, the, in the telecast at ESPN that he's, his demeanor makes it so that he's not too high, not too low. I think that works just fine. I don't have a problem with his demeanor in that regard, but it's what is happening on the court. It's what he's doing with our team uh, during this struggling time and how our players look on this roster you know what I mean And that's all it is it ain't the culture I don't think he's a bad guy I don't think the culture around him is bad I, you know you can definitely see worse guys coming in making the locker room worse you know what I'm saying I'm not saying that Frank is, a, is the worst guy but I'm just looking at what we got going on here it's like man if we continue this path we're going to miss the playoffs I think people think that that's a game when I say that or they haven't thought that out. But, no, I'm looking. I'm looking around at the league. I'm looking at everybody, and I'm telling you, nah, our, our bench right now is too old and too ineffective for us to have any real success against the real teams, the real teams in this league right now. But we got to get better at our bench. I think even if we start getting our motion offense going, even if we start implementing bigger – lineups and stuff like that I still think they're going to be games that we lose just off the strength of our talent not being where it needs to be on our bench the moment LeBron sits down we can't trust Russell Westbrook at this stage in his career and that's where we're at Anthony Davis is all alone and Anthony Davis can't carry nobody by himself 
that part has been proven in New Orleans. So that's where we are, man. I think our best bet, honestly, is to shop this Russell Westbrook contract, get rid of it, cut ourselves back down to two superstars, and then build real role players from there. Get our role-playing situation, get our role players back to being actual players, not old guys who probably uh, should not be playing anymore. Straight up. I love Carmelo Anthony. I don't have him in that category. I'm, I'm happy he's here. He's not a part of that at all. It's probably our best acquisition outside of you know, nobody, really. It's probably our best acquisition. So um, he was helpful tonight, you know, and, and, and I'm just I'm just continuing to be pleased by what I'm seeing from him. One of the most consistent shooters we got, if not the most consistent shooter we got, hitting his kickstand constantly on the road in Boston. He was big. He was big. You know what I mean? So I'm going to shoot him some, some credit on a night where we didn't get a whole lot from our bench. He was definitely available for us off the bench. Um. So, yeah, man, ain't a whole lot to like. Ain't a whole lot to like, man. I, I, I'd love to say a lot of good things. Braun looked good, you know. He hit his jump shot. He was very efficient in the first half. Played some good defense, drew some charges, did all kinds of good stuff. He wasn't a problem. Russell was quiet, which is better than him doing too much bad, which is what we usually get out of him. So I'm not going to blame this game on him. Like I said, I saw some good sequences. I saw some bad ones. But he wasn't the story, and that's a good thing. The story was coach. Frank got in the way. Him and his, his small ball philosophy and his stand-around offense. That's it. That's what happened. And the Boston Celtics give them credit, of course, as well, for doing their job and coming out against a team has a lot of star power and, and making sure they flexed on their home court. Jason Tatum was a superstar tonight. Dennis Schroeder deserved some money tonight. You know, Marcus Smart played extremely well tonight. Al Horford still has it. He still got it, you know, and you can't take nothing away from that Boston Celtic team who came in there undermanned without two of their starters in Jalen Brown and, and Tom Lord Williams. And they still managed to put up ferocious defense against a Laker team that's struggling. And we're both 500 clubs. Both teams, you know, both teams aren't playing well. But the Lakers seem to be the team you want to play when you're struggling because you're going to get on track with us. Our defense and our, and our lack of rebounding and our uh, soft interior play at this point is going to assure that you get right back in it. And, 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 and may, let that not just go by the wayside. Soft interior that's what happened tonight. Guys were soft. Guys were small. And guys got outworked by guys who were ready. Your Grant Williams, your Al Horford, your Jason Tatums, your Marcus Smarts. They were ready. And we only had a few guys who came out there ready tonight. Oh, and let this not be forgotten at all. We were down by, what, one at halftime? Came out in the third quarter, ended up getting having an average of what? Probably down a, a deficit of like 13 on average throughout the quarter. More of the same. More of the same. Still us coming out of the locker room worse than we were when we went in there. Franklin, his lineups coming out in that third quarter, trying to trying to run your, you know, your small ball stuff. Got beat again. I keep telling y'all, pay very close attention to the correlation between us having la a lack of size and us getting um, our, our, our leads taken away from us or our, our deficits expanding or even uh, more clearly the game just being lost. So long as we go small, we go home. So y'all take that for what it's worth. It's time to make some changes. Fire this coach, trade Russell Westbrook, and let's get back on track. Until that happens, we will continue to struggle. Bron or no Bron. My name is BDL44. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.